Perhaps you've been told that your destiny is written in the stars. It's a romantic expression, one that any astronomer will tell you is deeply flawed. For one, when we look through a telescope, whether it's your own backyard telescope or the large binocular telescope in Arizona, where Dr. Barry Rothberg conducts his own observations, we're actually looking backwards in time. A faint twinkle represents a whole galaxy, or even two separate galaxies filled with millions of stars whose light took millions of years to reach us. It's a snapshot in time, and that's kind of where I come in, is to sort of make a, a mass catalog of galaxies. Astronomers like Dr. Rothberg analyze these pictures in granular detail. They examine the spectrum of light, the gases, the dust, the motion of the stars within the galaxy. They use all of this data from the past to predict the fate of these galaxies. And so by looking at all these different galaxies, we can sort of build a movie of how we think galaxies evolve, interact, and eventually form new galaxies. And to hear him describe its plot, it's a billion year romance. When the galaxies interact, we have two objects which are passing by each other. Each of them has their own velocity. But if they get too close to each other, and if they're massive enough, they attract each other, so their gravitational interaction starts to begin. They've caught each other's eye, so to speak. We see them start to slow down, there's a breaking. You start to see what looks like the unraveling of one arm from one galaxy approaching the other. And you'll also see small flashes of blue along each of the galaxies. This is the first signs of the formation of new stars. But this is not a collision. Distances between stars are large enough that they'll actually just fly by each other. The galaxy's interaction is brief, but it sets in motion tremendous changes. Some stars will gain energy. They'll move faster. Some stars, their orbits will be slowed down. They'll break. It's these changes in the motions of the stars that rearranges the shape of the galaxy. And just like star-crossed lovers, they are inevitably drawn back together by their mass and gravity. But they're now caught with each other. They belong to each other the two galaxies start coming closer to each other again. This is where the gas from both objects start to flow towards each other. The shapes of the galaxies distort. You no longer see the spiral arms. You see a new sort of bright center. And again, you see these blue dots forming. And that's where we get the triggering of a vast quantity of new stars. There's also a lot more dust that's present because we have very large stars that are formed first. They have very, very short lives in the order of a few million years. All of the dust and the gas in the center of this elliptical galaxy flows inwards and helps to birth an active galactic nucleus in the form of a supermassive black hole. But the biggest, the brightest, most powerful, the ones we call quasars, tend to be found in massive elliptical galaxies. Now these wondrous mergers aren't always set in stone. Actually, a lot of the times, nothing will happen or some minor disturbance will happen. It all depends on how fast the two objects are moving and how massive they are. But if you have two big objects, then they will tend to interact with each other more often because they're, they're moving at a slower speed. And here's where the predictive science of galaxy mergers hits home. Well, it's sort of a look into our own future. The Andromeda galaxy, which is our nearest big spiral galaxy, is rushing toward us at about 700 kilometers a second. Well, we know how fast the two galaxies are moving towards each other, and we have a very good estimate of the mass of our two galaxies, and so it comes down to basic physics. Now, that doesn't mean the Earth and the planets will be flung off. We are gravitationally bound to our sun, but some stars get just enough speed that they overcome the gravitational pull of the two galaxies and actually get flung off into the void. But this isn't cause for calamity. We won't meet our destined partner for another couple billion years. And astronomers like Dr. Rothberg suspect the results of this union will actually be spectacular for us. And as first passage ensues, the stars in our galaxy and the stars in the Andromeda galaxy will get disrupted. And so our beautiful sort of Milky Way will not look the same. So our night sky will start to be lit up by beautiful nebulae, brand new stars forming. These will be visible to our naked eye. We will see this across our entire sky. Our sky will essentially light up. Well, eventually the Milky Way and the Andromeda will be an elliptical galaxy. It will be a sphere of stars. So if 
say we were somehow able to still be around in a couple of billion years, we will just see millions and millions and millions more stars all across our sky. That is, if we're lucky. For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.